Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace, through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that a person may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go ahead and open right on up to, uh, let's do uh, Matthew chapter, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 13. Let's do Matthew chapter 13, verse 50. Might be a little earlier than what I want. In Matthew chapter 13, give me verse probably 50. And shall cast them into the furnace of 51? fire. 51? 52. Yahushua, son of them, have you understood these things? Okay, so Yahushua, he got, what is that, 51? Yeah. So he said, this Yahushua, he said, in verse 51, he said, have you understood these things? Right, he gave them a list of parables. They asked, have you understood these things? What would they say? And they said unto him, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto them, Therefore, every, scri every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. He said, every scribe, right? What's a scribe? Uh, doctor of law. Right? That's somebody who copied. They wrote the, the what we consider the Old Testament now. But they wrote the scriptures down. They copied them down. So they knew them. You know what I'm saying? You had to complete copy something. You ever had a teacher? You know what I'm saying? You remember Bart Simpson? You know what I'm saying? He used to get in trouble. And he had to keep on writing some of it. The reason why the teacher used to make us write like that is because they knew we would remember it by doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I used to have, like, my spelling my spelling class, I used to have to write the words, you know what I'm saying, a whole bunch of times, you know what I'm saying? Then we take it on spelling test and make it easier, you know what I'm saying? So you have somebody who's a scribe, they writing it, writing it, writing it, writing it, writing it, and writing it, writing it, writing it, and copying the book and copying the scriptures and all these different things. And after a while, you know what I'm saying, they remember it. So that's why he's saying every scribe who is also what? Therefore, every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. So if you a scribe, that means I know the, the, the scriptures, the Old Testament, but you instructed unto the kingdom of heaven, which means you understand the mysteries of the New Testament, right? Every scribe, right? Every Old Testament scholar that knows the New Testament teaching is what? Is like unto a man that is a householder. He said he's just like somebody that's a householder. Which brings forth out of his treasure things new and old. And he brings forth out of his treasure both new and old. That's why when we look into the book, we go into the Old Testament. We go into the New Testament. We link stuff up from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Put it together. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Right? Because that's what the book calls for. If you're going to be a scribe, that's cool. But you did instructed according to the new? You instructed onto the kingdom? Okay, well that means you got to bring stuff out of the old and new. That's why I can't get with these guys like, oh man, I'm Old Testament only. You just a regular scribe. You know what I'm saying? At best, you just a regular scribe. You ain't instructed to the kingdom, though. You can't do nothing but that. I'm talking about some. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm new. I'm New Testament only. You you ain't even heard. I never even heard nothing like that. That don't even make sense. You only New Testament? That's it. Nothing else? Oh yeah, that, that thing ain't even. There's no definition for that. Oh, you know what that might be? A Christian. That's about it. That's the only thing you got for that one. A Christian. You know what I'm saying? Brother told me a Hebrew brother, you know what I'm saying? He a Hebrew, he calls himself a Hebrew Christian. You know what I'm saying? He said, uh, he said, yeah, I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Smart Hebrew brother. He ain't a stupid brother. You know what I'm saying? Smart Hebrew brother. So I asked him, um, no, he posted something. He said, um, I ain't supposed to something to the effect, if you a Christian, you ain't got no business doing something like this. You know what I'm saying? So I asked him, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Like, who are you to tell a Christian what they can do or what they can't do? He was like, you know what I'm saying? It's not about me, it's about God. I was like, no. Oh. When did God say anything that, 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 that a Christian can or can't do? You know what I'm saying? Like, explain, when did that happen? You know what I'm saying? Point it out to me. So he gave me some verses that, you know what I'm saying, he tried to, he tried to you know what I'm saying, bring it out. I'm like, nah, I don't say nothing about a Christian. You know what I'm saying? That's talking about the disciple. Read a couple verses up. 
disciple. You know what I'm saying? Read a couple verses down. Disciple. They talk about nothing about no Christian. You're not going to find it. You know what I'm saying? You know what everybody's going to come. You set them up. You just throw that out there. You know you're going to set them up after that. You know what they're going to come with. What they going to say after that? Uh, in Antioch, when they was first called Christians. They always going to go to that one. They're going to be like, and you know it. you know, Christian was used three times in the Bible. Oh, a whole three times, was it? <laughs> Which one? How many How many of those three or did you see a disciple call another disciple Christian? You're going to see it. You're never going to see it. You're going to see all these other folk call them Christian, but you're never going to see a disciple call another disciple Christian. Right? That was what we were referred to. Right? By Romans, by outsiders. Right? That's why it's hard for us, you know what I'm saying? We want to be scribes that's instructed according to, to the kingdom. That's why we learned the law. Right? That's why we went through that whole law and got it recorded. Right? So people can go back and they can look at it. Right? God willing, it stay there and somebody can go and they get bored and they get to look and might well accidentally say they darn right. Right? You can go through the law and understand it based off of what's written. Not based off of somebody's theories or opinions and all these different things. Based off of what the law said. Thus saith the Lord. Right? Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's try to wrap this up. This is uh, Joshua. So last week, y'all remember, we, um, we was reading the uh, book of Joshua. And uh, we know that uh, they ran into uh, Rahab. You know what I'm saying? We sent out a couple spies, ran into Rahab. After we ran into Rahab, told her we were going to save her. Um, and she made a deal with us and all that good stuff. Then um, we crossed over, uh, crossed over the Jordan River. You know what I'm saying? The water stopped on account of Joshua's word. The Most High God said that he was going to be with Joshua. So the water stopped. You know what I'm saying? Similar to how the water stopped when Moses was going through. You know what I'm saying? So the people were looking at him. And people were like, okay, Joshua, we with you after that. All right? So the Most High God showed himself in a way that, that, that would get the people on Joshua's side. Then uh, after that, you know what I'm saying, we were going to cross into the land of Jericho um, and kind of go to war with Jericho. And remember, that's where Rahab was. So that's what we're going to pick up now in chapter 6. This is Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Uh -huh. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Uh -huh. And ye shall compass the city with all ye men of war, and go round about the city at once. Mm -hmm. Thus shalt thou do six days, and... Seven priests shall bear before the ark seven how trumpets. How many? Seven priests. So he said it's going to be seven priests, and they're going to bear how many trumpets? Seven. He said seven priests, and they're going to bear seven trumpets. Right? He said he wants y'all to walk around. And what did he tell them to do? Watch, keep going. And seven priests shall, shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. In the seventh day... Ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. All right? So they're going to go blowing the horn for seven days. You know what I'm saying? And then on the seventh day, they're going to go around seven times, and they're going to blow the trumpet. Watch this. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, uh -huh. and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. All the people going to do what? Shout with a great shout. Uh-oh. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. He said on the seventh day, when they got around the seventh time, they're going to hear a little, they're going to blow it long. And when you hear that long blow after that, you know what I'm saying, then all the people going to shout. And after that, all the walls going to come down to Jericho. Remember, Jericho had these big old walls. We were like, man, we don't know what we're going to do with these walls. Why should it keep going? And the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. Mm -hmm. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let them that is armed pass before the Ark of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed before the Lord, and blew with the trumpets, and the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. Mm -hmm. And the armed men went before the priest that blew with the trumpets, and the renewer and the reward came after came after the ark. Mm -hmm. came after the ark. The priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout. He told them boys, Don't say a word. Right? So they're going around, everybody quiet. 
right? But not until I say a word do y'all open up y'all mouth. Joshua would know the plan, right? Remember, right before this, he met with the captain, the captain of the uh, of, of Yahuwah's host, right? So after that, you know what I'm saying? He got it. He, he gave him the plan. He was like, "This is how we're gonna win this thing, right?" That's how Joshua would come back with this information, all right? The captain, you know what I'm saying? Yahushua just appeared to him, just like, "Listen, this is how the thing gotta go." I'm the captain. Don't worry about that. I'm running the show right now. Follow me. All right? Keep going. Watch this. So the ark of the Lord come past the city, going about it once. And they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Mm -hmm. and Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets. Uh-huh. And the armed men went before them, but the reward came after the ark of the Lord. Okay. The priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day. It came to pass on which day? The seventh day. Okay, on the seventh day. That they rose early about the dawning of the day. Uh-huh. And compassed the city after the same manner of seven times. Uh-huh. Only on that day, they compassed the city seven times. Okay. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city, mm -hmm. and the city shall be accursed, uh -huh. even it, and all that are therein. So uh -huh. to the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are in with her in the house, because she did the messengers that she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest ye make yourselves accursed. Uh -huh. When you take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel accursed, and trouble it. Uh -huh. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Uh -huh. So the people shouted when the, when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city. Every man straight before him, and they took the city. Right? The walls fell down flat. Right? So they went around seven days. Six days, they blow the trumpet, you know what I'm saying, one through six. Then on the seventh day, they went around seven different times. And then at the very end, they blew the trumpet with a long blow. Then after that, Joshua was like, all right, everybody shout. They shout, all the walls came down. It's amazing that you get that number, right? And it happened right after they meet with the captain. Right? Yahweh Shua. It's amazing that he gave him that game. Who watch this? This is Revelation chapter 8. This is Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. I'm going to try to shoot through this real quick. This is Revelation chapter 8. Verse 1. Alright, you look at the book and you see the whole thing testifying to Yahweh Shua. Right? Every page you can just pick up a random page. You know what I'm saying? If you got a man that's wise enough, you know what I'm saying? The most I got revealed it to you, you can see how it connects to Yahweh Shua. The whole book. He said, I come in the volume of the book. Alright, so that's what we try to look at. Watch Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Okay. And I saw that seven angels which stood before God and to them were... How many angels? Seven angels. So it's seven angels and they stood before the Most High God and then they were giving unto them what? Seven trumpets. They were giving seven trumpets. That sounds, I don't know, seven angels, seven trumpets, things sound a little familiar. What else happened after that? And another angel came and stood at the altar having golden, a golden censer. Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him much incense. Uh -huh. That he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. Mm -hmm. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Now the most high God smell it. Watch this. Let's fast forward. This is uh, Revelation 11. Revelation 11. Watch this. This is Revelation 11, chapter 15. Revelation 11, verse 15. I mean, verse 15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. How many angels sounded? Seven. 
the seventh angel. Right? So you got one through six, they went, and then you got that seventh one that went, and after that, the, everybody shouted, what? The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord. And all of a sudden, people start shouting. Sound familiar, don't it? Right? They went around seven times. Then on that seventh time, you hear the trumpet go, and it's a long blow. Right? It's a long blow of the trumpet. Right? Then after that, you hear the, uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't know why this brother always called me. You know what I'm saying? But after that, you hear you hear the trumpet, you know what I'm saying? And that thing, uh, that thing calls people to start shouting. Then watch what happened after they shout. And the four and twenty elders, wait, and of his Messiah and shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which mm -hmm. are, which was, and which are to come, mm -hmm. because you have taken to thee thy great power and his reign. Uh -huh. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, mm -hmm. and that you should give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there the what? The ark of his testament. Ain't the ark? So the priest, you know what I'm saying? We are reading in Joshua, the priest was supposed to go, you know what I'm saying? But the people that came before it, you know what I'm saying? They were supposed to, the people that was armed, they were supposed to go before the ark. Then after the ark, we kept on reading. What came after the ark? No, the soldiers. The reward, right? Yeah. Ain't nothing changed. The ark of the covenant was up there in the sky after that seven hundred horn. That seven trumpets. And the kingdom, they all the kingdoms of the world, it became Yahushua's. Because that's when he won the war. That's why, that's why he could give Joshua the plan. He was like, listen, I've seen this one before. Don't worry about it. This is how we're going to do it. Just pay close attention. Trust me. This is how it's going to work out. Walk around this thing seven times. But on the seventh time, you had a priest walk around seven times. Right? Seven days, you're going to walk around. But on the seventh time, you're going to walk around that thing seven times. Then they're going to give a long blow. You know what I'm saying? That trumpet, they're going to blow the trumpet. It's going to be a long blow. Then you tell the people to shout. That's why he told the people, don't make a noise until I tell you. Then after that, he told them to shout. They shout, make that noise, walls came down. You know what I'm saying? They can take the whole place. Right? That's the function of a trumpet. That's what we, you know what I'm saying? We look at it. That's the fun. Grab uh, Ezekiel 33. This is Ezekiel chapter 33. That's the function of a trumpet. Like when we, when we had our trumpet, you know what I'm saying? Now we got cell phone, TV, all types of ways of communication. You know what I'm saying? To let people know. We just send a mass text message. You know what I'm saying? Like in Hawaii where, where somebody was playing around and you know what I'm saying? They thought, they thought a missile was about to hit Hawaii. You know what I'm saying? Like a mass text message went to everybody scaring their butts off. You know what I'm saying? Talking about, yeah, this is not a drill. A missile is on the way. Please tuck, duck and hide. This, that, another. Everybody was freaking out. It was a mass text message. Right? But back in our days, you know what I'm saying? All you had was a horn. You had to blow a horn. Right? And when you blew the horn, you had to blow it in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? To let people know, you know what I'm saying, this is what's happening. So you might blow, you know what I'm saying, we ain't got to get it, but I think Numbers 10, it'll tell us, you blow a horn like, like this, and this should happen. You blow a horn like that, and this one. But get, grab it real quick. This is, hold we got here in uh, Ezekiel 33. We're going to come back. Grab Numbers chapter 10. I don't know what verse I want. I'm going to say Numbers chapter 10, maybe verse, we might even start at verse 1. I don't know if it's verse 1 or if it starts somewhere in the middle. This is Romans chapter 10, and we'll come back over to Ezekiel 33. Numbers. We'll try to shoot through that. Huh? Numbers 10. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's Numbers chapter 10. All right, yeah, Numbers chapter 10, and then we're going to come back over to uh, Ezekiel 33. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver and a whole piece of... Sh what verse is that? Uh, one. Okay, this is Romans, I mean, Numbers chapter 10, verse 1. Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, uh -huh. that thou mayest use them for the calling of the assembly and for the journeying of the camps. Mm -hmm. And when they shall blow with them, all the assembly shall assemble themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And if they blow... But with one trumpet, then the princes, which are heads of the houses of Israel, shall gather themselves unto thee. Right? So you blow, but just one trumpet going to blow. Then they know, okay, 
they just call them the princes. They just call them the rulers. You know what I'm saying? The people that's in charge. That's why they just want to talk to the captains. You know what I'm saying? But go again. When you blow an alarm, when you blow an alarm, when you blow an alarm, then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward. Right? You blow an alarm, you know what I'm saying, this particular way of blowing it, then after that, the east is going to go forward. Keep going. When you blow an alarm the second time, then the camps that lie on the south side shall take their journey. Mm -hmm. They shall blow an alarm for their journeys. Mm -hmm. But when the congregation is to be gathered together, ye shall blow, but ye shall not sound an alarm. Mm -hmm. And the sons of Aaron, the priests, shall blow with the trumpets, and they shall be to you for an ordinance forever throughout your generations. Mm -hmm. And if you go to war in your land... But if what? And if you go to war in your land... I you wonder go, what type of blow are they going to do when you go to war? Keep going. That oppresses you, then ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be remembered before the Lord your God... And ye shall be saved from your enemies. Also on the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that they may be to you for a memorial before your God. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God. You blow an alarm. Right? When you look at it, you have to blow an alarm. So now you go in there and they say they blow a long blow. You know what I'm saying? What they doing is they blow an alarm. They try to let them know it's war. It's about to go down. All the people shout, walls come down. You know what I'm saying? Grab Ezekiel chapter 33. Y'all give me verse 1. All the walls come down. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set them for their watchmen. If when he sees the sword come upon the land, he blows the trumpet and warn the people. Mm -hmm. Then whosoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes and take not warning, mm -hmm. if the sword come and they take and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he has taken warning, shall deliver his soul. But right. he that has taken warning shall deliver his soul. So what's the function of the horn here? Warning. Warning. Just trying to warn the people. Look, if, if you blow the horn and the person heard it and he tried to protect himself, then he good. But if he ignored the alarm, well, you know what I'm saying? His blood is on his own hand. It's a warning. You're supposed to react to that warning. So that's what the that's what the trumpet did. They blew the trumpet. They trying to warn the people. This is what's about to happen. You know what I'm saying? Everybody starts shouting. Walls came right on down. It's game time after that. Right? That's Leviticus chapter 23. Leviticus chapter 23, give me verse uh, 24. Alright, all this stuff has significance. Alright, we don't even have to get all the way in, all the way deep into it where we talk about, we talk about, uh, we talk about uh, Thessalonians chapter, what is it, 4, 17, where, you know what I'm saying, Paul told us that we're going to hear that trump. Then after that, after we hear that trumpet, you know what I'm saying, then, uh, then you know what I'm saying, the dead and the dead and then the Messiah are gonna rise first. Right? You know what I'm saying? Or, or when Paul told, told us about the last trumpet. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna, like, it's gonna be a twinkle of the eye before that last trumpet. Then everybody gonna be changed. Right? You know what I'm saying? He's trying to let us know. Warnings is coming for these people. And he's trying to let you know when certain trumpets gonna come, that last trumpet, everything gonna change after that. We just read, we just read about that last trumpet. That last trumpet come, sky open up, you can see the ark. Right? These are all the things that are going to happen. That's why it's important for us to know our past. Because some of this stuff is going to repeat. It's going to look familiar. This is, uh, this is Leviticus chapter 23, verse 24. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, the holy convocation. Uh -huh. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Mm -hmm. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. What verses are? Four. Give me verse 24. Speaking to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath, a mm -hmm. memorial of blowing trumpets, mm -hmm. a holy convocation. All right, so we had a whole day set aside for blowing trumpets. All right, it was a holy convocation for us. It was a, a sacred assembly for us, a celebration. 
All right, keep going. You shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. All right, so this is on the seventh month on the first day. You know what I'm saying? So this is already past for us. You know what I'm saying? It was about a week or so ago. You know what I'm saying? And watch what else he talked about. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. All right, so then nine days later, you had a tenth day of the month, and it's going to be a day of atonement. All right? Keep going. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls, mm -hmm. and offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And ye shall do no work in, work in that same day, uh -huh. for it is a day of atonement, mm -hmm. to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not afflict in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. Right, so now you have to afflict your soul, right? We consider that fasting. You know, you have to kind of fast and kind of put yourself through some type of pressure. All right? He said, whatsoever soul don't do that, you're going to be cut off. I wonder why. Let's keep going. And whatsoever soul it be that does any work in that same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Mm -hmm. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Mm -hmm. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and ye shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the month at even, from even to even, shall ye celebrate your Sabbath. All right? And that was the day of atonement. It was calling, calling us to, to afflict our souls. Right, but we look at these things, these things mean nothing to us now. We so busy celebrating all these other people's stuff. It means nothing to us. Grab Colossians chapter 2. Alright, these things, these things hold some of the essence of what is to come. The stuff that we're looking forward to. Alright, when we look at Joshua walking through, marching to Jericho, that has no significance to some of us. But when you realize this is what Yahushua is going to be doing. He's going to lead us back into the promised land. And he's going to blow some trumpets. And now everything going to fall down. When you look at that, well, it's like, okay, now this has significance. Now I can kind of look at it and kind of see these are how things going to play out. Right? This is the format that God is using for how he's going to rescue his people. But, uh, this is uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holiday, in a, of in holiday, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. But is a what? A shadow of things to come. These are the shadow of things to come. The fullness is where? But in the but the but the body is the Messiah. Right? This is the this is the shadow of the very Messiah. You know what I'm saying? That we look at. These things, we don't have him. You know what I'm saying? When he is walking the month, he is like for you know what I'm saying, it's 12 hours in the day. You know what I'm saying? But then it's going to be night, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to have a day. So it's like we don't have him right now. When you're dealing with night, what is night? Dark. It's a shadow. Right? That's all that is, the shadow. You know what I'm saying? There's no light hidden. Therefore, it's a shadow. Right? When we on the other side of the earth, the light, the, you know what I'm saying? The light is shining on the other side. You know what I'm saying? This is for everybody who, who know the earth is round, not for you flat earth people. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You got the light shining on the other side. And it's hitting the earth. All you're going to have is a shadow on this side. Right? We all in the shadow. So that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to let us know it's 12 hours in the day. And you're not going to have him after that. So now we're in a position we don't have him. All we have is his shadow. Now if we dealing with his shadow, shouldn't we be paying attention? Because if you see, I mean, you're just standing on the corner. And the only thing you see is like a shadow hit the corner. You know what I'm saying? Like you can see the shadow. You can see somebody coming. If you see a shadow, you'll be like, man, that looks like my master. Ain't you gonna pay attention to that when you waiting on your mouth? Like, oh, he coming. This is it. He coming. But no, nah, not us. We, we, we don't say, no, nah, it's just a shadow. We don't care about that. If you don't care about your master's shadow, you don't care about your master. If that's all you got and you waiting for him to come, you would think that's one thing you'll be on. And the book clearly tells you this is the shadow and the fullness is in his body. And his body is on the way. You know, stop letting these people make a fool out of us. Grab uh, Colossians, turn it verse 1. It's Colossians 2, verse 1. Watch this. Try to shoot through this real quick. It's Colossians chapter 2, verse 1. For well, I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea. Uh-huh. And for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. Uh-huh. 
that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, mm -hmm. to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, uh -huh. of the Father and of the Messiah, uh -huh. in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh -huh. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. With enticing words. Enticing words. He's basically saying, these people going to be talking real slick. It's going to feel good to you. You're going you to want to latch on to what they're talking about. He said, don't let nobody trick you. Beguile, that means they lied to you. Don't let nobody lie to you with some enticing words. With these slick-talking devils. All right? Watch what he said. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joining and beholding your order. Uh-huh. And the steadfastness of your faith in the Messiah, mm -hmm. as ye have therefore received the Messiah, Yahushua, the Lord, so walk ye in him. He said, the way that you receive the man, walk in him. When did you receive him with Christmas and Easter and all these other, you know what I'm saying, Ash Wednesdays and, and you know what I'm saying, all these other things these, these folks celebrate. You've never received them that way. But they're going to make us feel ashamed by celebrating the stuff that's in the book. These people lost their darn mind. Hey, a lot of these people so darn backwards, it's a shame. Keep going. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, uh -huh. abounding therein with thanksgiving. Okay. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deception. Empty deception. Don't let anybody spoil you through philosophy and empty deception. What else? After the tradition of men. After the tradition of these darn human beings. But not after what? After the rudiments of the world and not after the Messiah. For right? What do you think Christmas, what do you think all these celebrations are? That's what it is. Traditions of men, vain deceit. But they're going to make us feel guilty about celebrating what's in the book. They're going to say, oh, no, all that stuff is done away with. It's just a shadow. What If my stuff is a shadow and that's just a shadow, <laughs> right. what is y'all crap? <laughs> that thing ain't even a part of the game. That ain't even like... We ain't got nothing to do with it. That's crazy. Right? That's crazy. Let's keep going. Let's get back on track here. This is Luke chapter 5. I'll try to shoot through this real quick. This is Luke chapter 5. Give me verse 30. Watch what y'all sure got to say. At the end of the day, we just got to look at it. We got to say, okay, what are we here to do? We here. We looking for the Messiah. We just dedicating our life to the Messiah. We want to walk in the Messiah. We want to, we want to, as we received him, so walk in him. Okay, let's see what he celebrated. Let's see what he, let's see what he kept his mind on. This is Luke chapter 5, verse 30. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Uh huh. And Yahshua answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician. He but, said, if you whole, you don't need a physician. But they that are sick. Uh-huh. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Okay. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink? All right? He said, the disciples of John, they fast. Right? The disciples of the Pharisees, they fast. But your disciples... Y'all eating, y'all drink, everything cool with y'all. Why is that, y'all sure? Watch what y'all sure said. And he said unto them, Do you make the children of the bridegroom of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? Uh-huh. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then they shall fast in those days. He said, while I'm here, it don't make no sense for them to fast. This is a celebration while I'm here. He said, but I'm going to be taken away from them, but, and that's when they fast. Yeah, the whole thing to fast was to get closer to the, to the most high. Yeah, what you need to do that when he's here? That's yeah. celebration time. You got it. Standing right next to the man. What's the point of trying to get closer to him? Man, he said, that's when you afflict your souls. So that's what we do in the fast, right? He's apart from us now. Our atonement is apart from us. That's why we afflict our souls. That's why we celebrate the Day of Atonement. Because he's apart from us, All right? Grab, uh, grab uh, Romans chapter 6 real quick. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 12. It's Romans chapter 6, verse 12. 
should not sin, therefore reign in your mortal body, mm -hmm. that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. Mm -hmm. Neither yield ye your members as, in, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Mm -hmm. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Mm -hmm. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law but under grace? No. God forbid. That's right. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, uh -huh. whether of sin unto death uh -huh. or of obedience unto righteousness. Okay. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Uh -huh. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. Okay. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members, your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, unto iniquity, uh -huh. even so now yield your member, members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Okay. For when you were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Okay. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Okay. But the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants of, to God, Ye have your fruit unto holiness in the end everlasting life. Mm -hmm. But the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is what? It's death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Yahushua the Messiah. He said the wages of sin is death. We commit sin. That's why we need atonement. That's why it's important. All right? That's why we celebrate the day of atonement. Because the wages of sin is going to be death. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you sin, guess what you got? Death. Death. That's what you got coming. That's your paycheck. Right? If you work for sin... Your paycheck is going to be death. Right? That's how the Most High God set this thing up. So now if you got that paycheck coming, whether you want it or not, I mean, you go clock in to work, whether you want the paycheck or not, you should be like, man, I don't even want the paycheck. I bet you the white folks going to give it to you. Because they know if they don't give it to you, then they going to get in trouble. You can sue their butt. Even if you sign a paper, I don't want this paycheck, they need you to take it and give it away. Otherwise, you can sue their butt if they just say, okay, well, we'll keep it then. Nah, it don't work like that. I can sue the pants off of them, but them, but them, them folks will freak out. They'll mail it to your darn house. Like, all right, well, you ain't got to take it by hand. We'll mail it to you. It I bet you that the records won't find that we kept it. Right? No matter what, you're going to get that paycheck. Now, you do what you will with it. Right? Same for, same for us. You know what I'm saying? We work for sin no matter what. We're going to get that paycheck. That thing is death. No way around it. You know how you can, nobody gets by that. Right? No way around. Grab, uh, grab Romans one chapter back. Romans 5. Watch this. It's Romans 5. Give me verse 6. Nobody gets by. Right? Everybody who sin got to die. Mm. For when we were yet without strength in due time, the Messiah died for the ungodly. Uh -huh. For scarcely for a righteous man one will die. Okay. Will one die. Yet for adventure, perhaps for a good man, some would even dare to die. Mm -hmm. But God commanded his commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, the Messiah died for us. Mm -hmm. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Right? So we were reconciled to God. That's what atonement is. Right? To be reconciled. He said when we were enemies against him, sinners, you know what I'm saying, destined for death, you know what I'm saying? The man laid down his life and gave us a path to be reconciled by him. Right? Or reconciled with him, rather. Right? So that's what it's about. Atoning for us. That was the sacrifice, the sacrifice of atonement. Right? Real quick, grab, uh, grab uh, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. After that, we're going to grab uh, Exodus 34. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Then we're going to grab Exodus chapter 34. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Once to do what? Die. Everybody got to die. But, but after, after they this, die. But after this, the judgment. Right? Then you got to be judged. That's where y'all should get. Forget Exodus 34. Grab, uh, grab uh, John uh, 5. It's John chapter 5. Right? That's how he set it up. Everybody has to die because he already set it up that way. In our law, he already said, 
a man, if a man don't do these things, he must die. If a man, whoever don't continue in all these things, then he shall be cursed. So death was already set up. You know what I'm saying? That paycheck is already coming. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing you can do to get out of that paycheck. So what he had to do was like, okay, let me set something else up to get around this. So now after you cash in your death paycheck and you die, he said, well, I can just set up a judgment after that. And based off of the judgment, the man who died for everybody, who paid that cost, if I, okay, so let's see. If you got a credit card, right? Mm -hmm. You got a credit card and you owe debt, right? But in debt, let's say it's $50, right? I send the payment into your bank. I'll use a real life example. I just closed on the house, right? As part of the closing on the house, they said you have to pay your Best Buy credit card. You have to pay that thing completely off. That ain't like 200 something dollars, according to their records. You know what I'm saying? The last thing that reported on my credit, it was like $200 balance. They said, we want that thing completely gone. So it's like, I tell you what, instead of you paying it directly to Best Buy, you pay us, right? So I paid them the amount that they saw on my credit report, 200 something dollars, right? Then what they did is, they took that, lumped it in with all the other money that I gave them from my house. Then they cut me a check, the escrow company. They cut me a check. They wrote it out to Best Buy, right? So the check said 200 something dollars to Best Buy. They said, now you take that check to Best Buy. Now, if I got this check from the escrow company, and let's say I already paid my Best Buy card myself, even though they told me not to do it, I already paid it myself. I have to give them this check also. What's going to happen after that? It's going to go on your balance. So now I'm having credit balance, right? I overpaid it, yeah. right? That's what we're dealing with now, right? Y'all, she would die for everybody. Anybody, everybody, not just anybody, everybody he died for him, right? He's a man without sin, so he died for everybody, right? Now, you, your butt's still going to die. Ain't no way around it. Your butt's still going to die. But guess what? Overcredited, right? Because he died. Now, you die. You know what I'm saying? So it's now two deaths on the books for this one death that's needed. One of these got to go back. Who do you think it's going to go back to? It's going back to him. So now he has an option now. He said, okay, I got this extra life. You know what I mean? I got an extra man. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I can do what I will with it. It's mine. We overpaid. So now this is mine. I can give it to you if you do what I say or you know what I'm saying? I can hold on to this, keep it in my back pocket. I'm sure somebody else might need it, right? So that's how he set the thing up, right? And then we find ourselves in a position where if we don't do what the man say, he's going to send ourselves to the second death, all right? He'll send, he'll send us to the second death. But the Most High God established it that way. He put it in his hands just for that reason. This is John chapter 5. This is John chapter 5. Give me verse, uh, give me verse 20. The Most High said, the earth is mine and everything that's in it. All souls are mine. All of them. The soul of the Father, the soul of the Son. Verse 5, what? Excuse me, 520. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that himself does. Uh -huh. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Uh -huh. For as the Father rises up, raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Mm -hmm. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, mm -hmm. that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Mm -hmm. He that honors not the Son honors not the Father which has sent him. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. That's a fact. But is passed from death unto life. Uh -huh. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. All right? Since he died, he has the authority to say, everybody, get back up. But you know what? I'm only going to give that to the ones that actually did what I It's his choice. Right? It's his choice. You know what? You get up. You did what I say. You, you didn't do what I say. You sit your butt down. Right? But everybody going to hear it. All right? The ones that hear him and do what he say, you go one place. The ones that ignored the butt, that's it. All right? Grab uh grab uh grab uh, Leviticus chapter 16. It's Leviticus chapter 16. We're gonna start at verse 1. All 
All right, that's what atonement is all about. It's bringing us back in a, in a proper place with the Most High God, in an acceptable place in His eye. All right, and that, that requires a sacrifice. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place when the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon, thy, upon the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Thus, So you had the high priest. Aaron was our high priest. The high priest would go into uh, the holies of holies. You know what I'm saying? He'd go in. And then, you know what I'm saying, go to the mercy seat. But he's like, listen, don't just go there. You know what I'm saying? You go there one time, mess around, and I'll kill you. You know what I'm saying? So it's one time a year. Guess what that one time a year is? Day of atonement. Day of atonement. Right? So it's this significant day for us where atonement has to be made year after year. Watch this. Keep going. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for the burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen. He shall put on the holy linen coat, and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh, and shall be girded with a linen girdle, mm -hmm. and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are the holy garments. Therefore shall we wash his flesh in water, and so put them on. Had to be clean, right? Keep going. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering. He's going to take two what? Kids of the goats. Watch what he offering. do with these goats. And one ram for a burnt offering. Okay. And Aaron shall offer his bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make an atonement for himself and for his house. So he made, he had to make a sacrifice of a bullock for himself. All right? Then he had to take a ram for the people. Then he had to take two goats also. There's four different sacrifices. All right? Keep going. And he shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door, door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm -hmm. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, and one lot for the Lord and the other for the scapegoat. Right? So you had two lots, you know what I'm saying? One for the Lord and one for the scapegoat. Right? Keep going. And Aaron, oh wait. And Aaron shall bring the goat upon which the Lord's lot fell and offer him for a sin offer. Mm -hmm. But the goat on which the lot fell on the scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make an atonement with him mm -hmm. and to let him for us and let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering which is for himself. Mm -hmm. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of, excuse me, of fire from the altar before the Lord mm -hmm. and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small and bring it within the veil. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony that he die not. Mm -hmm. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward. Mm -hmm. And before the mercy seat shall the sprinkle of the blood uh, with his finger seven times. Shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people. All right. So remember, the one fell on, he, he cast lots on two goats. One of the Lord and one of the scapegoat. The one of the Lord gets sacrificed. Right? So that's the one he's talking about right now. Keep going. And do that with the blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. Right? So now he, sp he sprinkled the blood of the bullock and the blood of the people for the sin, sin offering, both on the mercy seat. Right? Watch this. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions and all their sins. And so, so shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation that remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. Mm -hmm. And there shall be no man in the tabernacle of the congregation when he goes in to make an atonement in the holy place until he comes out mm -hmm. and have made an atonement for himself and for his household and for all the congregation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it. And shall take of the blood of the bullock and of the blood of the goat and put it upon the horns of the altar round about. And he shall sprinkle of the blood upon it with his finger seven times and cleanse it and hollow it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he has made an end of reconciling the holy place and the tabernacle of the congregation. It means when he has made an end of doing what? When he has made an end of reconciling the holy place. Reconciling it, right? Watch this. In the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, he shall bring the live goat 
and Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat. All right, so now this is the scapegoat. Remember, it cast lots. You know what I'm saying? One land on, on the goat for the Lord, and the other one for the scapegoat, right? So now he's going to bring the scapegoat. He killed the other one already. He's going to bring the live one, right? And then he's going to put his hands on him. What up? And confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions, and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. All right? So then, after that, all the sins of the people get put on this goat. Then this goat gets sent off into the wilderness. All right? Watch this. Revelation chapter 20. This is Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Show y'all what that represents. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit. And Remember, who who put the goat? A fit man. So Aaron didn't go put a, he didn't go take him out himself, did he? That'd be by the hand of a fit man. Matter of fact, before we even read it, let's read, let's read a little bit more about this fit man. Let's go back. Hold on, hold we got right there. We're gonna come right back. Let's, so he said by the hand of a what? I just want to make sure we get that. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle in the congregation. What verse is it? This is Leviticus chapter 16, verse what? 21. Verse 21. Watch this. And Aaron shall lay uh, both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel, uh -huh. and their transgressions and all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, mm -hmm. and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Uh huh. And the goat shall bear upon him all their iniquities, uh -huh. and unto a land not inhabited, and he shall let go of the goat in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of the congregation, and shall put off the linen garments. Yeah, take off his clothes. When he went into the holy place, and uh -huh. shall leave them there. Uh -huh. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place, and put on his garments, and come forth and offer his burnt offering, and make burnt offerings for the people, and make an atonement for himself and for the people. And the fat of the sin offering shall be shall he burn upon the altar. Mm -hmm. And he shall and he that let go the goat for the and he goat, that did what let go the goat for the scapegoat. This is the fit man, right? Shall, what up? Shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement for the holy place, shall mm -hmm. one carry forth without the camp. Where are you going to carry it? Outside the camp. Uh huh. And they shall burn in the fire their skins, in the fire their skins, and their flesh and their dung. And he that burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. Everybody had to get cleaned up. Right? So the fit man had to take him out. He had to come back, get himself cleaned up before he could come in. Watch this. This is uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and the great chain in his hand. He had a great chain in his hand and the key of a bottomless pit. Hmm. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil. He, had, he said he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is who? The devil. Okay. And Satan. And Satan. And bound him a thousand years. No, they didn't call him Lucifer. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? No, they didn't. You know what I'm saying? Laid out all his names. No, that Lucifer wasn't among them. Right? So he laid hands on him, and what else? And cast him into the bottom of this pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little seed. Alright? He took him to the wilderness. He was the fit man. Right? It was an angel that came by, he was like, you know what I'm saying? Let me read it again, verse two. Uh, verse two. And he laid on... Uh, he verse laid one then. It's Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Watch this. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. A what? An angel come down from Notice heaven. Notice it ain't Yahushua. It had to be a fit man. Right? Angel came down from heaven and what else? Having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Mm -hmm. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. All right. All the sins of the people get put on Satan. All right. Book let you let book let you know very clearly. He released Satan on these people. That's why that, he had to prove it out because after the thousand years, guess what? During the thousand years, guess what's good? Everybody. Ain't no problem. Everything. Everything rocking. 
But then he said, I had to loose him a little bit later. I wonder why. He had to prove that all the sin belonged to Satan. After that, he released him again. Guess what? People started acting up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to fight God now. Now he's like, okay, you to blame. All the sins on you, get your butt out of here. Right? Then he throw him into the lake of fire after that. Then it's over for him. Right? It's important that we see these things and we understand what the Most High God is doing. All this stuff tied back to everything that we already have. It's a shadow of things that are coming. Like, this is how it's going to play out. This is what it's going to look like. When you see a shadow, you can't see all the details, but you see a general form of what it's going to look like. That's what the Most High God is trying to give us with our days. When we talk about the Sabbath, when we talk about the feast, right? Starting all the way at the very beginning, Passover, first fruits, um, uh, uh, unleavened bread, all right? Feast of harvest, right? Feast of weeks. You know what I'm saying? You got day of day of trumpets, day of atonement, and then the end gathering that's coming up next week, all right? Or the week after next, next week, yeah. You know what I'm saying? You look at all these things. All these things represent something for the Most High God. All of them mean something for Him. It's just up to us to pay attention enough so that we can see the general form. That way, it's understandable when He shows up. Otherwise, we're gonna be looking around. We don't know. We don't know what we darn looking at. Right? It ain't like we ain't got experience getting it wrong. Our ancestors got it wrong already. The man showed up was a walking, a walking among them. And we were just looking at him like, no, nah, that, that can't be. Him. Right? All our leaders were looking at it like, man, we keep letting people believe it. I know we doing, we he doing miracles. They not even denying the fact that he did miracles. They said, nah, man, look, listen, he does do these miracles. We gotta stop these people from believing this stuff because we know he can't be a Messiah. And they got that thing dead wrong. How you think that they ain't gonna be when they come back? They coming back looking for white Jesus that's nice and caring and he loves everybody. They gonna be met with a man chopping people darn head off. They be like, nah, that ain't here. That's the devil. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? His father, nah, there's no way that anybody who served God would be making fun of Christians. They got that, they just got that. We had backwards one way, now we got that thing backwards the other way. There's no way y'all make fun of Christians. There's no way that y'all can serve God. Okay? Okay. You know what I'm saying? You tell me no, I make fun of Christians, Hebrews, Muslims, all of them. You don't serve God, I'm mocking your butt. Guess where I learned that from? Uh, Elijah. I <laughs> learned that from the prophet Elijah. He mocked me, he said, where is your God? Is he sleep? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why he ain't coming out? What, he sleeping? He tired? Eventually he went on a long journey. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? What's wrong? Maybe he tired. Maybe he been walking all day. Yeah, you mock the mess out of these people. Any questions, let's get up out of here. Hey! Stop making that noise, boy. Y'all got any questions? Let's pray out.